Hello and welcome to another episode of Combat Analysis of Chivalry Medieval Warfare, where we take a look at hostile engagements, analyse them and talk about ways to improve our playstyle. My name is Marcus and I'm your host this evening. This time around I've chosen to focus on duels instead of a team based combat. I'm actually not at all experienced in 1v1 and don't post nearly as many hours as other hardcore duelists, but I have been doing it a bit more recently, in the past 200 hours or so. I would roughly estimate I've played around 50 hours on Duel Yard, definitely not more than 100. And that is out of my 3k hours in total in Chibble. Before we begin also take note that all the duels were played on either Comp Mod or Mercs. If you don't know the implications of this check out Gator's video on it, I'll leave a link to it down below. First couple duels I want to show were played in sort of a private session with Svaros. Actually not on Duel Yard but on Grove instead. Let's play it in full speed first and then take a closer look in slow motion. That definitely got a bit scary for me halfway through, but I still managed to come out on top. He starts off with a pretty simple overhead and I go straight for a feint. Now when I do this I usually try to turn into the strike a little so as to decrease the distance that my weapon has to travel before impact. It just makes the feint slightly more intimidating and likely to succeed. He tries to duck my subsequent slash unsuccessfully, but ends up parrying my reverse overhead. Afterwards I can't quite turn back around fast enough to see his repast coming. And obviously there is no grunt either that I can look out for. This is one of the downsides with the reverses, it does kind of complicate parries afterwards. Here he is the one going for the reverse, which I now parry, and since I have the initiative I go for dragged alt overhead. Basically I have two go to ways to respond to reverses, one is to do a quick repast so as to hit my opponent before he has the chance to turn around and see my attack, and the other is to do a very slow drag because as he turns around he's going to be slightly more likely to panic and parry early, since up to this point he's had a lack of vision and doesn't really know what's going on. He, if he does parry early, a drag is a good way to get in afterwards and score a free hit. I am a bit intimidated by the way he moves, I'm anticipating another reverse which is why I parry so early and he does ultimately do a pretty excessive drag instead. And then I'm yet again anticipating a reverse and parry too early again. But then he doesn't quite follow my movement and ends up strafing far too much to my left as he tries to drag his last attack around my parry. I move to the right and end up dodging it altogether. He follows up with another miss and I'm pretty sure he even did a safety combo feint at the end. All this worked towards emptying his stamina pool in which I now have the advantage. So let's pause here and talk about our options a little. So far I've only scored one hit on him and will need two to three more successful attacks to kill him. I'm stuck on about 10 HP so I'm not in the window of dying to a simple kick but he only needs one attack to finish me off. We did create a little bit too much space in between us for my liking because my best option here, even though I'm low on HP, is to keep the pressure up. At the moment I have quite a bit of stamina to work with, whereas he does not, and this is currently my only edge against him. I make sure to start my attack early here, which is smart, but I think I make a small mistake in going for the feint to parry, since we are playing mercs and he therefore should fall victim for first hit flinch. It is pretty clear that I start my attack earlier than he does, and as long as I don't miss or end up dragging excessively, I should be able to flinch him even if it goes into a release. But on the other hand, I find it it's fairly common to end up in hit trades in mercs anyway, so it's kind of hard to be certain of what the best play is. He's hoist with his own pet head afterwards as he jumps backwards and starts another attack. Since I stay out of reach, he just ends up losing even more stamina this way. At this point I kind of want to restrict my playstyle a bit. If I try to do excessive drags or feints, it's very likely I'm going to get traded or punished because his stamina is so much lower than mine, 
and I therefore can't afford to do many more parries. By sticking to reposts and excels, I make sure he doesn't get in any dirty gambles. I also want to avoid doing reverses, if possible, as it does lower my chance of parrying him afterwards. After another miss from him, I start another stab, just in reach of him. He tries to sidestep it, fails, then tries to sidestep my overhead, which also fails, and then he gambles on my final overhead. I think this shows very well why it would be stupid to feint someone who is low on stamina. If I had done that here, I would have either gotten flinched or lost massive amounts of stamina in order to parry his gamble. I'm fairly confident it would have been better for him to tank the stamina burnout as early as possible. Yes, it would have given me a free attack, but he also would have had HP left for about two more, and he would have had one one fourth of his stamina back after the burnout, which could have been enough to faint me one more time, or something of the like. Now we ended up taking three hits for free just because he didn't have stamina left. Here we reset and get ready for another go. I'm also going to play this duel twice. Alright, another win for me. He starts off aggressively with a feint and I try to dock his follow up slash but can they get it done? Since he should be pretty used to my slash feints by now, after all the duels we have been doing lately, I switch things up by going through with my first attack. Fortunately for me, it works out. I try to fake a reverse here and do a feint. He ends up falling for it and I managed another hit on him. He tries for a repost reverse slash, but is out of reach. On the follow up stab he feints again, and I end up falling for it. Here I take even more damage as I fail to see his reverse coming. He continues with the stab feints, and I read it, and then he completely misses the subsequent slash. After that he starts panting, so now he has a maximum of 15 stamina left. In this particular matchup, Longsword vs Longsword, I am guaranteed a successful burnout with two hits, if at least one of them is an overhead. It can be done with other types as well, but there's no reason not to throw an overhead in there. He starts swinging again before I wind up, and I'm forced to feint a parry. But it's not the end of the world for me, since I have a lot of stamina to work with. With my overhead, I burn slightly more stamina, and once I successfully parry his overhead, the fight is virtually won, won for me. If he parries one more time, I will be granted a free hit because I know he has a maximum of 6 stamina left, and any attack will knock that down below zero. The only chance he has to live is if I miss the free hit in burnout, or don't deal enough damage with it to finish him. But none of that matters, as he chooses not to parry at all, and my overhead ends up killing him. Now let's have a look at duel number 3. I start off nicely by dodging backwards as soon as he starts winding up. But when we both start attacking simultaneously, he maintains a better composure. I parry in response to his first attack, he sees that opening and scores a free hit. Here I should have capitalized on his miss. It was pretty easy to see the potential for it early on, I was just being way too scared. When I do another slash feint here, he punishes me efficiently, and at this point I'm really losing the stamina war. I make things a lot worse by attempting a reverse overhead repost, which ends up missing completely. Since I'm virtually out of stam, I, I try for a gamble, but what I should have done is start the attack earlier, so as to avoid a hit trade. I give the reverse repost one more try, but he parries that successfully, and at that point I'm one hit from both death and burnout. Going for the burnout is slightly better, but my chances of survival are extremely low, and I end up dying to a final repost. 
all things considered, I think there are two things that made me lose this fight. First off, he had a superior stamina management, and secondly, he capitalized on, on my low stamina and didn't give me any time to regenerate. Since I gave him so much space after dodging his initial stab, he gained back the stamina he lost. It remained equal to mine where we both fainted, but I was the one who took damage. When he missed here, I could have burned quite a bit of his stamina by forcing out a CFTP, but alas, I parried instead. Then we traded quite evenly for a while, but he outplayed my pool by punishing my feint and forcing me into a feint to parry. So let's pause and talk about options here again. He is still at 100 HP and has more stamina than I do. What I really need with my following attacks is to score effective hits, i.e. attacks that don't cost any stamina. This can be done either by dodging his attacks and countering after, or by doing successful reposts or drags. Essentially anything but feints. Simply throwing attacks back and forth will eventually end with me in burnout. So what I try to do is a fake reverse that I turn into a drag, but much to my demise he parries successfully and puts me one step closer to Mortem. After that I make another attempt to bypass his parry by slowing down my overhead repost. Yet again he reads me like a book and parries successfully. The nail in my coffin is my attempted overhead repost which ends up missing horribly and puts my stamina close to zero. I make an attempt to run away and regenerate stamina, but he stays hot on my heels and manages to secure the kill. Overall a nice systematic outplay by Svaros. I'm going to show one more duel from this session and then move on to fights with a, cop uh, with a couple other opponents. Okay, so this fight has started off pretty aggressively by dodging when I see him wind up and going in with a feint in recovery. Typically people always fall for these kind of feints unless they're trying to gamble mindlessly. In order to dodge my attack he ducks and this forces me into a CFTP which greatly reduces my stamina. Here he does a delayed overhead repost which manages to bypass my parry. But he goes on to miss several attacks, partly because I run back to dodge one of them, and for this his stamina suffers. Here I try to drag my slash, but he anticipates this and runs further away from it, ultimately dodging it altogether. This results in us both being fairly low on stamina, and with another missed overhead it is for me reduced to zero. This means that we're both pretty happy just falling back to region. I start with a feint but choose to follow through on the second hit even though he does not fall for the first. You could make a case for keeping on feinting until he falls for it, but if you do this repeatedly you will become much more predictable and eventually your opponent will learn to punish every time you start feinting, since he knows you will not attack until he parries. I fall for yet another of his reverses, I'm actually really bad at seeing them coming. After that I'm expecting him to feint me again, which is why I play overly defensive and start circling even though he's not winding up. Eventually we start slashing at the same time and I go for a feint to parry. The fight ends when he falls for another slash feint. If he had managed to read this, I would have been very likely to lose the duel, but luckily for me, he did not. And on that note, let's move on to a different session played on Duel Yard. This also on Mercs or Comp Mods, I can't remember which. This particular duel I'm up against a guy called Yugen Jigmoni. No idea who this is really, but I'm pretty terrible at duel lists profiles in general, so going forward, please forgive my ignorance. As he goes in for the stab, I realize he's most likely going to miss, and therefore backpedal to dodge it and counter with the stab that forces out the CFTP.
I try to follow up my free hits with a reverse slash, but don't turn around enough and ultimately end up doing a drag instead. I turn my ult overhead XL into a drag and manage to bypass his parry this way, but sadly miss on the next reverse in the combo. We exchange a couple more attacks, but then the fight ends as he chooses to gamble mindlessly on my overhead. Next up is a duel against a guy named Willy Dilly Camdom. This duel ends quickly as it didn't follow my place at all. I start off with a successful reverse slash and maintain a high tempo by fainting on the follow up overhead. On the final attack is most likely expecting an excessive drag as it doesn't parry in time before my reverse hits him. Take note that I did not use any stabs in this duel and this did contribute to shortening it. Slashes and overheads with a longsword do equal damage to knights and mercs, another difference from vanilla. As you can see from this table, two overheads and one stab in the body adds up to 99 damage on a knight, meaning that you actually need 4 attacks or 3 attacks and a kick to kill them with this type of combo, instead of 3 as I did just now. This is of course assuming that all attacks land on the torso, which obviously isn't the case in every fight, and there are other possibilities as well, but a good rule of thumb is to always use the higher damage attack type after a feint when you know it's going to land and don't need to consider dragon accelerability. As I don't lose any HP, this duel transitions seamlessly into the next, this time against Dan the Man. Again, I'm not sure if this is his real name, but I have seen him a number of times in the yard under, under it, so maybe. He starts off horribly out of reach, and I force out a CFTP. After his repost I trade for a feint, but he gambles and manages to flinch me on the second one. I then overdrag my overhead and end up missing altogether. He goes for another senseless gamble, and this time he is rightly punished. Here he does yet another gamble, which sadly ends up working out as I miss my own attack. On the fourth gamble it backfires again and I score yet another free hit on him. We both back off, feeling the need to regenerate stamina. As soon as he runs in and winds up, I run further back. This is a great way to outplay your opponent's stamina and also ensures that you don't fall for any more feints than necessary. If you're out of reach, there is no need to parry. Sadly I am a bit too scared and wait so long during his slash that I don't feel comfortable falling through with my stab that was meant to flinch him and wind up on the next attack. This was the plan from the moment I started dodging his initial jump stab, but I just completely choked. If I had landed the flinch, I could have easily maintained my combo and killed him on his fifth gamble or so. Instead I end up falling for a final slash feint and die to a stab. Now let's have a look at my second duel against Hugin Higmoni. Before we analyze this replay, let's talk a little bit about stamina usage and the stamina counter I have implemented, in order to give you guys and myself a better idea of how stamina traits look in fights and what the big culprits are when it comes to losing stamina. I have done the counting manually and based it on numbers provided by the chivalry spreadsheet and other various sources regarding stamina mechanics, as there isn't any official information on the subject provided by Tornmana. First let's go over some quick stamina basics. All classes start with 100 HP and stamina. A total of 15 stamina is lost upon missing attacks with any and all 200 weapons. 10 stamina is lost upon missing, missing with a 100 weapon. 
So far it's pretty simple, but it gets worse. The stamina cost on parries depend on three factors. Your weapon, your opponent's weapon and the attack used by the opponent. This opens up for around 6700 different interactions and it's simply impossible to keep in memory. I do however think it can be valuable to know the numbers of a couple common matchups, such as longsword versus longsword as it is a common occurrence in duels. If you have a different favorite weapon you could look into that and see how it interacts with other common weapons. But for now let's stick to the longsword. As you can tell from the sheet, parrying a longsword overhead with a longsword depletes 9 stamina, whereas slashes and stabs cost 7 stamina to parry. An opponent will start honking after reaching 15 stamina or less. What this means, in practice, if you're using a longsword, is that you are guaranteed to knock them into burnout with two attacks if at least one of them is an overhead. It is likely, but not guaranteed, if no overhead is used, as slashes and stabs only add up to 14 stamina drain combined. In burnout, 25 points of stamina are restored. For the purpose of understanding stamina regeneration, I made a couple of bullet points. Stamina replenishes at 12.5 points per second and I am unsure of the chunk size. Attacking and parrying successfully cancels stamina regeneration and resists the 2 second long cooldown before regeneration is resumed. Parrying unsuccessfully cancels stamina regen but does not reset stamina regen cooldown. Taking damage cancels stamina regen but does not reset stamina regen cooldown. Running temporarily cancels stamina regen but does not reset the cooldown. You will also notice the altered health and stamina bar on my HUD. This is a tool I've used in post-processing to help evaluate my own stamina usage and not something that is available to me in-game while playing. The advantage of it is simply the smaller increments of 10 points per bar as opposed to the 25 of the bar provided in the game. It makes it easier for me to see how much I regenerate at different points in time. Remember to take the exact numbers provided in the duel with a grain of salt as it becomes incredibly difficult to determine the stamina pool of opponents once regeneration is brought into the picture. The Berka stamina counter is still in beta and Berka Studios take no responsibility for lost limbs or cardiac arrest caused by following the information blindly. Alright, now let's have a look at the duel again. Here I'm trying to do a reverse slash but I end up dragging it instead as don't turn far enough at the start. He goes straight for a reverse repost, and as you can see he falls victim for the lack of vision and parries too early as to drag my counter attack. He does however keep up a good footwork which I fail to adapt to and therefore I miss my otherwise free hit. He forces me into a CFTP and despite losing the stamina war up till this point he now has a 24 point advantage. Because of this I want to find a way to outplay his stamina and one of the best ways is to utilize good footwork. I start running back as soon as I get the chance, and keep an eye on him as best I can. As soon as he's about to get inside attack range, I want to start running again. So if by chance he winds up, I can dodge the attack and force out a CFTP, and thereby revert the stamina disadvantage. Here I get a bit too greedy and avoid parrying even though he's close enough for contact. I have, however, gained back some of the stamina I've lost. After my stab he chooses to try for another reverse slash, but he moves uh, far too much forward as I in turn backpedal in the other direction. I further uh, use this to my advantage by backing off again, as he continues his combo. He follows up the second miss with an attack to Paddy, and at this point I had turned the tables, as he now has a 7, seven point of stamina disadvantage. While I was playing I was fairly confident he combo fainted to Paddy in response to my stab, but after looking at the stamina numbers and following the, the events afterwards, I can see no other explanation that it was in fact an attack to Paddy. We continue to trade quite evenly on stamina until I miss again, and after landing my successful overhead I again feel the need to buff up my stamina a little. So as he starts swinging again, I immediately start running backwards. Here I actually managed to force out a safe TP, and because of this his stamina is put extremely low, below the 15 point threshold. I managed to score another successful reverse slash, putting him just one more hit from dying. I end up going for a fade here and I'm actually not a big fan of it. I think it's always better and safer to follow through with attacks when the opponent is low on stamina, as they are far more likely to gamble in these situations. 
Luckily for me, he ended up falling for the feints and I finished him off afterwards, but I could have actually lost the duel if he had chosen to gamble instead. I'm not going to implement the stamina counter in any other fights in this episode, as tracking takes a tremendous amount of time, but I think there's a lot to take away from just one example anyway. For instance, it becomes very clear that the biggest stamina drain by far is CFTP and missed attacks, whereas pirates are a lot less costly. Therefore, making sure that you are always in range when you attack is a great way to improve your performance in the game. And offensively, it's very effective to dodge attacks by running out of reach when possible, as I demonstrated several times in this duel. Now let's move seamlessly into the next duel, against Dan. There's not too much to talk about in this duel other than that my faint reading is terrible. I make a pretty big mistake in staying passive when he goes for his initial stab, as it is clearly out of reach. It would have been great to go for a strike mid combo. The second attack also misses, but since I parry anyway, he gets to continue his combo. I make an effort to dodge the third attack, but misjudge the distance to him and take a slash in the back. He continues with an overhead feint which I fall for, hits me with another slash and then repeats this one more time. I did start off the duel with a little less than full HP, but ultimately I don't think it mattered, because I probably would have died from these three attacks anyway. The next duel is against Hugin. I'm off to a pretty great start as he swings out of reach, and I force out a CFTP. This already puts him at a 37 stamina disadvantage. Now it is his turn to force me into a CFTP, and my stamina falls far as I initiated with a feint as well. My repost however is successful, and I score first blood. Here I quickly regain ground in the stamina department as he misses another attack while I regenerate. It is not made better for him with a subsequent microfaint. After parrying one more attack, you can hear that he is close to burnout, at 15 stamina or less. I throw out an overhead, as one should in order to drain the most stamina. I am a bit confused as to how he managed to parry twice yet anyway. Somehow he must have gotten a little bit of stamina back, as one stab and overhead should secure it. Either way, on the third hit he finally gets knocked out and I choose to overhead on my free attack since it deals the most damage on the longsword. Actually the slash has equal damage values in mercs, but if you're playing vanilla the overhead is the strongest. I follow up with a fainted reverse and finish him off with a final strike. It did take me 4 hits to kill him despite only using overheads, and the reason for this is that the second successful hit made contact with his foot, and therefore the first 3 attacks only added up to 95 damage. Practicing a better aim is definitely a good way to become a better player, as you can finish off opponents quicker and give them less room to counterplay. Now let's have a look at another duel with Willy. He fails to parry my lean in old slash, and he falls for the feints on my second attack. After landing two slashes, an overhead is quite a natural follow up, as three attacks of this kind is just enough to finish off a knight. He does however manage to parry my reverse, and that postpones his death a little. He makes an attempt to bypass my parry with a feint, but I manage to read it and parry the follow up slash. Here he tries for another feint, but yet again I manage to read it. At this point I've had enough, do a final slash feint and kill him with an overhead. 
I think his decision making was justified in going for excessive feints, as he had lost lots of HP but still had most of his stamina left. He can then afford the stamina loss in exchange for some blood on my end. But at the same time, if I keep my composure and don't fall for his feints, I'm also in a very good position to kill him, as I have tons of stamina and only need to land one more attack to win the duel. By far his biggest mistake was failing to parry my first two slashes. Let's move on to another duel with the Dan. He initiates horribly out of reach and I run backwards in response to drain his stamina as much as possible. I don't start running as soon as I should have and therefore feel the need to parry in case he's in range with the overhead. He continues to feint the stab, but fails to hit me while I'm open as he tries to do a fancy reverse slash and misses completely. Despite failing to read his feint, I'm still at full HP and have a massive stamina advantage. He goes for a gamble on my stab and gets flinched as a result. Not taking reason into account, he has burned as much as 75 points of stamina on missing attacks, fainting and gambling. Usually he is very happy to go for feints, but since his stamina is so limited and my HP still so full, he probably senses this tactic won't be viable. Because of this I have little trouble parrying his following attacks. He falls for a slash feint, which puts his HP even lower, and when he parries my reverse he tries for a reverse repost, which also depletes his stamina. I score an easy hit mid combo that flinches him and finish him off with one final feint into overhead. I didn't need to read a single feint to win this duel, simply because he made an awful job of managing his stamina. I think this demonstrates quite well why feints are fairly balanced, even though they are very difficult to read. You can't abuse them without ironing out your footwork and stamina management beforehand, and that takes a lot of practice. Now I do want to end this episode with a clip from another session, play the day after this one. To give a little backstory, I had been getting my ass whooped continuously by Robocop and finally won a duel against him, and that is what I wanted to show. God, that was satisfying. Let's see how I accomplish such a feat. I start off in a good fashion by dodging his first attack, but start my own attack so late that I'm forced to faint to parry anyway, and thereby lose the small advantage I've gained. Then I score a successful reverse, and another stab as it goes for a gamble on that attack. I'm anticipating a feint or at least an attack of some kind, so I start running backwards, and he ends up missing again. Here I clearly overread the stab, as I'm very used to him fainting on them by now. But then he goes for yet another gamble on my stab, gets flinched and put down to one hit from dying. In my eagerness I actually go for a double feint, which is entirely out of character for me, but he keeps his composure and manages to read them both. Here I fall for another stab feint and get scaringly close to dying myself. I expend the last of my bodily resources to a final stab feint, which he, to my great joy, falls for, and thus his killing spree is put to an end. And with that, I feel like it's time to wrap things up. Dueling has definitely grown on me a lot lately, and I find myself sparring in the yard more often now than ever before. Studying the spreadsheets and stamina mechanics in this game definitely took quite a bit of time, but I felt like I learned a lot as well. If you've got the time, I would highly recommend that you dive into the actual stats and values of this game yourself. It's a great way to reach a deeper understanding of it. Thank you for watching this episode of Combat Analysis. I hope you enjoyed and hopefully even learned something. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more of these. If not, maybe we'll just meet on the battlefield instead. 
That is where the real magic happens after all. Alright, work us out.